Well, God is, is really doing a thing. I feel like this is important, and I know I keep saying that every week, but I feel like this is important, not just for you and I today, but for the body of Christ. I believe that we're in a, in a huge transition. As a matter of fact, it's not just a belief like, you know, I kind of believe it ethereal, let's see what happens kind of belief. I believe it because I'm watching it with my own eyes. I'm watching a frustration come within the church, a great portion of the church, and getting frustrated that things aren't happening, the message is being watered down, Christians are walking away from the church. Churches are closing. Pastors are leaving the ministry in droves in the Western world. But the reason I'm so excited is it's like the changing of the guards. The old is transitioning. When I say old, I'm not trying to put it down because it's old, because that has nothing to do with it. It becomes irrelevant, not because of age, but because of being stuck. Remember when the children of Israel were in the desert, they were in the desert for 40 years, and one of the rules that God gave them is says, when you see, you remember in the daytime, he was a pillar of cloud. In the nighttime, he was a pillar of fire, and he would hover over the tabernacle. And he says, when you see that pillar, whether it be night or day, but when you see God rise up and start moving on, that means pack your bags and follow him. And he would stop, they would camp. I'm not really sure how long they would camp, probably at least a few days because the tabernacle was very intricate. It wasn't just like break it down in 15 minutes. God picks up and moves on and his people are supposed to follow him to a new place, a new location, new uh, surroundings. And what's happened in our own church history is often, not always, but often when God gets up and says, okay, I'm done here, doing this move, he gets up and moves on and many, maybe not all, but many of the people of God just stayed camped out and they've lost the pillar of fire. So now they're hovered around their own little campfire remembering what God used to do. And God is moved on and he's still doing miracles. He's just not doing it there anymore. You know, and I know I've told you guys this story and um, I remember and it even happened here. Somebody was preaching here. We had a guest speaker in here and this never bothered me before, but he, he said, we are Pentecostals. And as soon as he said that, everything, he went, no. And it just hit me. No, we're not Pentecostals. And I really had to check the Lord. Why, why is this bothering me? I'm Pentecostal. And the Lord says, if you want to stay back at the camp of the Pentecostal movement, you can be Pentecostal. I've moved on. Oh, okay. I better move with you. Now, I'm not trying to put down Pentecostalism at all. I mean, that's my roots. But God moved on from that. The charismatic movement, the healing movement, all these different things. And so to be somebody that's going to follow the Lord, not just say it, but live it by following him and staying in step with him, we're present truth. At that time, the present truth was Pentecostal, then charismatic, and then, you know, everything else that was added into it, you know, word of faith and all these different things. I'm going to take all of that and carry it with me and go on to something else that God's going to do. That's my heart. So we see from Scripture that we're in this transition from Saul, and it's going to eventually be from David. First, it was Eli to Samuel, now Samuel to Saul to Saul to David. We haven't made it to David yet because the study of Saul is so big. And we see this transition. So the body of Christ right now is in this place of transition. In other words, the cloud of smoke, the pillar of fire is up and beginning to move. And a lot of people that cannot or will not move with the Lord are drying up and falling apart. And so a lot of people are looking at what's falling apart and going, oh, we're doomed and gloomed. America's failing and they're not looking at those who are following the Lord because it's a small group you know what frustrates me and we say this a lot it really hit me again hit me the other day the Holy Spirit checked out this on, on me you know how we say well there's always the remnant and praise God for the remnant that's the small group out of the whole that's really going to follow God but why is it always just the remnant? Why can't the whole follow God? Why is it always just a small select few? Why are we so, and when I say we, not you and me personally, but broad stroke, you know, but why are we as a people always being whittled down to a remnant? You know what I mean? I mean, even God knows that in this sense, like when Gideon, uh, when he raised, raised up Gideon, 30,000 show up, but he can only take 300 because he knew if all of them went, the victory would be won and they would take the glory for himself. And doesn't that just sound like mankind? He had to whittle it down to a remnant so he could get the glory. So people could turn their eyes back to him instead of at one another. But a people, and trust me, there is a remnant. It frustrates me that there is only a remnant, but there is a remnant. And each and every one of us has a choice on whether or not we're going to be part of that remnant. But out of the remnant, we will change the whole. That's what the 300 of Gideon's army did. 
they secured freedom for the entire nation. So don't worry and don't get all beat up and in fear because another church closed down. It's frustrating, I know that, because they should be part of the remnant. They should be part of the ones moving with the Lord. But get excited because God is raising up a Gideon's army. David and King of Israel. Uh-huh. Proverbs 1 2. They will help you learn to be wise, to accept correction, and to understand what's things. Proverbs 1 3. They will teach you to develop your mind in the right way. You will learn to do what is right and to be honest and fair.